So let me resume recording. Before we start first, I want to um, talk about uh, this week's schedule. So this week we'll have two coding lecture. Today we'll finish uh, Newton's method. And on Wednesday we'll have a coding lecture. And on Friday we'll also have a coding lecture, uh, which we will learn how do we use a very mature optimization package in SciPy. It's called a SciPy Optimize. I mean, so uh, perhaps the coding lectures, perhaps all the preparation um, are for us to learn how do we use this SciPy Optimize package? Because um, for you, um, or for your future career, uh, for your research, or for your uh, grass study. Let me check if uh, remote student has any questions so far. No, so far so good. Um, this is most useful, all right? So we'll have two coding lectures this week. So we'll learn a few tricks and uh, we'll learn like um, a few caveats while learning, uh, while, while using this package. Um, the other is uh, I want to advertise an undergrad seminar on machine learning. So I'll give on Wednesday. Um, so on Wednesday, um, so this Wednesday, I believe, I, I forgot the exact time, but uh, I'll send out an announcement in class. So, so I will give an introductory, uh, this uh, seminar on, uh, on deep learning. So how do we use the method, the optimization method um, in our class? We have learned in those deep learning models. And uh, um, so, Next semester in 450, we'll learn some more in depth, like tricks, way of handling, you know, like if your data is say uh, five gigabytes. Right now, let's say our matrix is perhaps 500 bytes. Okay, so, um, but what if our matrix is, has perhaps a million rows and a million columns and how do we handle that? Um, so also, um, so if you're interested and if you think you're good at coding, so you can Google, um, so there's a competition. So I plan to participate on Kaggle. Uh, you can Google Kaggle plus Jane Street uh, market prediction. So Jane Street is a, is a very famous, it's market analysis company as well as it has a hedge fund branch. So, um, so what we try to do is, so whenever you hear the term training an AI or a machine learning model, it's essentially an optimization problem is we apply. So what we have learned in our class in a scalable way. So what we have learned only applies to, let's say uh, the matrix with maybe at most uh, several thousand rows and columns, but uh, it doesn't quite scale to, let's say if you have a million rows and columns. So if you think you're good at coding, you can contact me and we can form a team and uh, we'll learn some um, models while participating this competition. Okay. So I, I'll, I'll, I will send out this uh, um, announcement uh, on Canvas, but here I just want that you guys know. Okay. All right, so let's uh, recap what we have learned.
so we spent like two weeks um, trying to uh, solving this question. And Q is a positive matrix and uh, it's symmetric. So we have learned uh, gradient descent and steepest descent. The gradient descent, we, uh, we use convergence analysis to determine its uh, step size. But uh, um, overall, its form is this. So we update the minimizer candidate by uh, this type of uh, formula, okay? So we name, we, we, we usually call, let me, so let me uh, add a new thing. So we usually call this a negative gradient is our search direction. So we follow this direction to minimize our function is because this direction is, um, is, where, uh, is where this function decreases fastest. Um, and then we learned, okay, so, so for gradient descent, this guy is two divided by lambda max plus lambda minimum, all right? So it's like a fixed constant number. And for steepest descent, if we do a line search at every step, so this is like, a, this is like a optimal, like one thing for all, actually this is alpha, it, it doesn't change, uh, with respect to iterations. And uh, um, this is, uh, we choose one simple number and it will converge. And for steepest descent, we actually, we have to update every iterations. All right. So, and then we have proved um, convergence and then we learned the convergence. So the convergence of, uh, uh, of this type of, uh, um, of this type of uh, uh, iterations, it depends. So one we have proved in class and one uh, you guys can learn how to prove in uh, homework five, which is for steepest descent uh, rate of convergence. So it's in the homework. So if uh, you have trouble, you're welcome to ask on Piazza or come to the office after. So for CG is we improve this method. This method has only one search direction. So every time we follow one direction, but CG is uh, our search direction. Okay, so our search direction, um, it becomes, so our search direction, it becomes a subspace. And then we have a bunch of technicalities. For example, we have to make sure they are, so the search directions are Q orthogonal so that every time we only make one update. So we don't have to, orthogonalize at every iteration, we only orthogonalize one vector and we don't have to, for example, so, um, so in CG is we compute this projection This Q projection actually. So what happens is um, when, when we compute the projection, it actually becomes, it actually becomes so we can write it as
and actually it introduces an iterative formula. All right. So despite we have a subspace, this subspace is changing. It's like first iteration, we have one vector in this subspace. Second iteration, we have two vectors in the, this subspace, but we only need to search in one direction because the other direction is Q orthogonal. So that's like the key is even though for CG, our search directions are a subspace, but every iteration, we only need to search one direction because of the Q orthogonality. That, that's uh, the caveat for CG. Okay, so today, so today we'll, new, uh, uh, we'll learn a new method called Newton's method. And we have actually learned Newton's method um, in the very first week of uh, this semester. So for you. We have actually learned Newton's method um, so Newton's method to solve a nonlinear equation, but smooth, okay? So we have learned, actually learned Newton's method to solve this nonlinear equation when, when F is a smooth function. And so let me recall the formula. The formula is, The formula is, so here is, uh, is, is uh, so here is, uh, so X is, uh, is a one dimension um, scalar. It's an R, it's not an Rn. And uh, we have this iteration. All right. So I'm not sure if this, uh, looks familiar to you guys, but uh, if uh, we draw a picture, it looks like this, okay? So if we start from here, so let me draw. So if we start from here, so it's like XK. So let's say this is X zero. And then we start from X zero, we follow the negative gradient, but after this point, okay? So it's like we draw a line We draw a line, we originally add here, and this part is actually this negative thing, and it becomes x1. And from x1, we follow the negative gradient, we draw a line here, and eventually we'll be converging to this x star, which is the root of f of x. Okay. So this is Newton's method. And the key is Newton's method converges quadratically versus the relaxation we learned. Okay. So what is Newton's method in the relaxation, I'm sorry, in the optimization context? So what is Newton's method in the optimization context is, we actually, we wanna solve for X in F prime of X is zero, okay. So let's say uh, given this F, we know that uh, given this F, we know that given that F has, we know that um, has a local minimizer. Okay. Then looking for this local minimizer, it changes to the problem looking for a critical point. Okay. So we just assume this local minimizer, uh, we only have a local minimizer and it's not a maximized problem. If it's maximization, we can just replace F with uh, negative of F, okay. So now Newton's method can be simply written as 
we just change this f to f prime and f prime to f double prime. Okay, so let me write in this way, which is f double prime of x k inverse times f prime of x k. Okay. So this is a Newton's method for optimization. And the formula is quite simple. But keep this in mind. This is because we are in 1D. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of a term. The term is called curse of dimensionality. It says the following thing. Um, the curse of dimensionality says the complicatedness of a problem. I'm saying complicatedness because I don't want to use complexity because sometimes the complexity we can design a method so that is invariant with respect to the dimension. So how difficult to solve this problem, the curse of dimensionality is curse of dimension curse of dimensionality means actually so sometimes it's a structure of this problem becomes much much more comp complicated than the 1D simple case. Okay. Actually for the Newton method, it's this case. So let's consider this problem in n dimension, okay? And n is greater than or equal to two. So, it's actually the same as we are solving this equation. So finding the minimum of this function is equivalent of solving this critical point problem if we know that, if we know that F is smooth and uh, convex. Okay, so if F is smooth and convex. And Newton's method becomes so Newton's method becomes k plus one's iterate vector. This is a vector, and the kth iterate is another vector. And as you guys might already expected, double prime becomes the Hessian matrix. So now, this is a matrix, this is a matrices inverse. So this is a matrix. Let's see if uh, the remote student can see the edge of the board. Okay, right now it's good. And gradient like that. Panel number four.
All right. Um, if if we look at if we look at this formula, it's actually it's actually bearing the same form with steepest descent and gradient descent. It's simply we change the step size, which was alpha k, to a matrix inverse. So think about it. And we change this alpha k to the inverse of a matrix. And now we want to prove the following thing. And we know that we know that um, we have proved we have proved no matter. Um, so uh, we have proved in class that we have linear convergence um, for um, for this one. So we'll, we'll see that um, for CG, so uh, the convergence theory is uh, quite complicated, so we'll leave for next semester. For CG, we got almost quadratic, but not so, but still um, it falls in the linear range. But for the Newton, if we're willing to pay the price of this inverse, we get quadratic convergence. And let me first rewrite the practical form of uh, Newton is we do the following. So, so Newton is actually, is actually um, can be rewrite as a following. So we compute a PK. So that PK is basically a search direction. All right, so PK is this guy. And then we just follow this PK, we update our iterate. So PK, PK is a matrix inverse times a vector, all right? And if it's a matrix inverse times a vector, it's equivalent of solve for PK in this linear system, which is the Hessian. times PK equals the negative gradient. Let me see if the remote student can see the equation, okay. So looking for PK is actually equivalent to solving a linear system. Later on, later on, we'll, uh, we'll learn that this, this system does not need to be solved exactly, and we'll still enjoy quadratic convergence. But now let's prove if we apply Newton, all right, um, to a function, this f satisfying certain conditions, we get a quadratic convergence. So, So we have the following theorem, um, which is a convergence result for the Newton's method. Um, we, we have actually demonstrated earlier that quadratic convergence is like a, not just an order of magnitude faster than linear convergence, it's a much, much faster than linear convergence. Um, 
So if linear convergence converge in like uh, 200 steps, Newton may converge in like five steps. And uh, um, the theorem says following. So F first is F is smooth. And F is convex in the neighborhood. So convex in the neighborhood in omega. So we have the um, we have um, like several conditions. So that um, such that um, x star in this neighborhood omega is a local minimizer of this f. Okay, so this. Minimizer And if we have an extra constraint, if we have an extra constraint, so right now it's very similar to the Newton's method we have proved in our second week. Um, we have some constraints. So if what we call this is let me first give you guys a name. So the name is called Lipschitz continuity. So Lipschitz, I believe, uh, is uh, either a French or German mathematician um, back in the 90s, 19th century, my bad. So Lipschitz continuous for the Hessian. So Hessian is a matrix. Um, so the statement is follow for X and Y uh, two points in this neighborhood omega. The norm of the Hessian matrix evaluate at a point A subtract at point B. And this is a two norm of a matrix is less than or equal to a capital L. So capital L is some number times X subtract Y for some uh, for some capital L fixed capital L that's greater than zero. And uh, this L is called also called a Lipschitz constant. And we say that um, if this is the case, the Hessian is Lipschitz continuous. So let's, re, uh, let's recall quickly what is the matrix norm. Um, let me use this little space right here. So this is basically a matrix norm. It's we take the supremum or say the maximum of this AX divided by X. So these two are both two norm. And we have two norm, two norm, two norm, two norm. So if we don't use any subscript, it means two norm. So panel number seven, the second condition is convexity. And it's actually called a strong convexity. So strong convexity says the following, it's uh, uh, for, any, for any X in this neighborhood, uh, we have we have uh, um, 
we have this is a positive matrix, i.e., um, for any vector, in Rn, and that's not zero, we have P transpose, uh, the Hessian matrix at this point, uh, times P is strictly greater than zero. Actually, it's, uh, it's strong convexity, so it's, uh, uh, I'm sorry, this should be greater than or equal to mu and greater than or equal to zero. So it's greater than or equal to a, con uh, a positive constant that's greater than zero. And if we write explicitly, it's for any non-zero vector, it's P transpose the Hessian at this point P. So this is a matrix. This is like our Q matrix, okay? So this is like our Q matrix is P, tra P transpose QP is greater than or equal to mu P transpose P. So all we can, uh, we can say uh, it's simply uh, the minimum eigenvalue of this matrix is greater than or equal to mu, which mu is a constant. So I mean the theorem, even for the statement, it's quite long. Um, we have these two conditions. The first one is it's smooth. It's Lipschitz continuous for the Hessian. The second one is it's convex, but it's strong convex so that it's minimum uh, eigenvalue of the Hessian is greater than uh, or equal to a constant, then, so if one and two happens, then the sequence produced by this iterations So then the sequence produced by this iteration converges to the local minimizer X star quadratic. So then the sequence produced by um, the Newton's iteration. So what we have here is uh, then for that, uh, the sequence, the sequence converges the sequence converges to X star in the sense of this. So the norm, the difference of x k, which is our iterator uh, at the kth iteration with the x star. So the difference norm goes to zero. And uh, um, given, so given x zero is also in this neighborhood, which means um, our initial guess, i.e., our initial guess has to be, so initial guess is close to uh, our minimizer, okay? So this is the theorem of uh, Newton's method, the convergence result. Let me check if the remote student has any questions. All right, let's continue. Um, and let's prove it. 
uh, it converges to zero as quadratically. So uh, there is a keyword quadratic convergence. It's much faster than uh, linear convergence. And now let's prove it. And uh, uh, the proof, the proof is uh, actually uh, quite standard. Um, we, we have learned if we have, if we have an iterative relation or say recurrence relation like this, the first step is always we subtract the point it converges to on both sides. number nine. And we got to acknowledge one fact is X star is a local minimizer. It means we have learned that a necessary condition for X star to be a local minimizer for a smooth function is its gradient is zero which means we can insert the gradient of uh, X star here. So let's continue writing this. So subtract the Hessian. Gradient of uh, this guy, subtract the gradient of X star. Because this is zero, this is zero vector. And the proof resembles what we have done in week two for Newton's method, but to combine. So uh, the idea is to combine this term with this term. I mean, it's, <laughs> It's not so easy. I mean, um, so the first is we have to acknowledge that um, this guy right here, the Hessian is invertible. So for this term, we can actually add an identity matrix by pulling out this Hessian. So if we're pulling out this Hessian, on both term. So this inverse matrix, if we pull out on both term, this term will have a Hessian, but without the inverse. So Hessian inverse multiplied with Hessian is identity matrix. Identity matrix times this guy gives back to this guy. So the first term becomes this. The second term, because we have pulled out this, we are only left with here, which is minus um, parentheses. Let me see the for most students if it's uh, visible.
And our goal, our goal is to combine these two terms. And actually <laughs> these two terms looks awfully like uh, Taylor expansion. So let me explain why. So let's recall the Taylor expansion for a multivariable function. This was featured in lecture 19, the formula. If we have So if we have um, a G, a smooth function G, um, then we can introduce a Taylor, a Taylor expansion so that this guy equals this plus an integral and this integral is gradient of G. So we start from this point, we wanna go to this point and uh, um, plus t uh, times p. And this is a dot product with p dt, okay? So it's like we integrate the gradient from this point to this point. So this is, uh, this is uh, essentially like a, a multivariate version of a fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, so, and we wanna generalize this to the Hessian version. So if we wanna generalize this to Hessian version is we replace this as gradient. So it's gradient of F. All right, equals gradient of F X plus zero to one gradient of, we change the G to gradient of F. So now it becomes, we take gradient twice, it's a Hessian. And this is dot product with uh, uh, this vector. So right now this is just a matrix multiply with this vector. Then we would like to use this formula right here, but uh, not yet. And now let's see, uh, how do we represent this difference using this? So the way to do this is we acknowledge, so we let the left to be X star, all right? And this equals gradient of F, X, we let X equals the kth iterate. And this means, this means P, so this just means P equals, um, so basically this guy subtract this guy is P vector. So this guy subtract this guy is P vector. And okay, let me move this formula a little bit right here. So it is Okay, so we have this formula. The formula is Taylor expansion. Basically, we wanna handle this term. 
We're going to handle this term so that we can combine this term with this term. And uh, um, like I said, the problem, the complexity, not the complexity, the complicatedness of the problem uh, grows when uh, the dimension grows because the Taylor formula now becomes this. So we let x plus p to be x star and x to be xk. Their difference is p vector, which is this guy. And we copy down this integral. So it's a Hessian and xk plus t, t is we integrate t from zero to one, and this is a p vector and the dot with p vector. And which means, so which means this guy right here, which is a, a minus gradient of uh, f evaluated xk plus um, gradient of f evaluated x star is nothing but this term. So as we can see, it's, it's, so right now it's just algebra. And moreover, moreover, I'm gonna flip, moreover, I'm gonna flip the order of uh, xk and x star here. So we'll get something like the following. So we'll change this to a subtract. Um, so the minus, the minus of this term is plus this term, but we wanna flip the order of this so it matches with this. So now we change it to a subtract and it is the integral from zero to one, the Hessian evaluated at this point so this is panel number nine but i erased it and times xk subtract x star dt and the parentheses so next step is to combine these two terms we can further combine these two terms. This is a common factor. This is integral with respect to dt. This term has no dt term whatsoever. That's why we can simply insert an integral from zero to one dt right here. because this term has nothing to do with t. So it's like a constant vector with respect to this t. That's why we can artificially add the integral from zero to one to it. Now we can see, we can combine these two terms together. So we'll leave this uh, to Wednesday. So on Wednesday, we'll finish proving this convergence and then we'll learn how do we use scipy optimize uh, to implement this in Python. So that's it for today.